Imagery is the perfect complement to the visual language of GIS, and it's a key component of the ArcGIS platform. And when we combine image analysis with geospatial analysis, we can gain new understanding of our world and the issues we need to address. Well, we want to share with you some of the new capabilities of ArcGIS and the Image Analyst extension. So to start us off, I'm going to ask my colleague Yoon to take us into the mountains of Iran, where we'll investigate a suspected military facility. Yoon. Thanks, Joe. Using ArcGIS and zooming into our area of interest, northwest of Karmabad, we discover a facility of interest hidden in the mountains. Let's take a look at our most recent native image. But to really understand this area, we want to look at multiple images over time. We can connect to our portal and search for additional services. Discovering four digital globe imagery plus analytic services that provides access to our current and historic collection of images. Using image services, we no longer need to download terabytes of raw imagery. We have access to it immediately. Once these are added to our map, we can click through the different images. From the oldest to the next, and the next, and the most recent. But 2D is just one perspective. Let's add a 3D scene, spinning it around, we can look into the valley. Let's take a look at the perimeter of this facility. Here's our first observation. This is a security wall. And following it down, we notice a gap. However, looking at it in 3D, it's not really a gap. It's an elevation change that we didn't see in 2D. Let's take a closer look at the road into the complex. Using a Vericon i3S mesh, we have a beautiful, realistic view of the area. It appears there's a road that dead ends at the cliff. Let's analyze this in 2D with our current image service. Focusing on top of the cliff, we discover what looks like a circular hole. That's about four and a half meters wide. Clicking through a few more images on November 30th, the hole gets covered. And about a year later, there's another hole to the south. And then, looking at the most recent pan sharpen image, we can confirm that there's definitely something hidden underneath the surface. Let's dig deeper using a new capability, image space analysis. Working between an image coordinate system and map coordinate system becomes seamless. If we use oblique images orthorectified into map space, it becomes difficult to discern anything in this distorted image. But now, ArcGIS Pro can seamlessly transform map space to image space. With one click, you can see the image at the angle it was taken. In this case, from 180 degrees to the south and 4040 degrees off nadir. Or an analyst would say, look angle. Let's see it again. Melted mountains become pretty mountains. Let's take a closer look at the tunnel entrance. On this day, the clouds got in the way. Let's try another image. And viewing it in image space, we can now see the entrance. Let's adjust and brighten this image before further analysis. The menstruation tool uses spatial reference and the camera model for accurate measurements. Measuring the width of the entrance, 8.1 meters. We can also measure the height of this building using its shadow. From the top of the building to the top of the shadow, 3.2 meters. Our image services support a variety of sensors from a variety of satellites. 
If we switch to a GOI false color image, it makes it easier to explore and identify a number of suspicious objects inside this facility. Like these three vehicles. Let's take a look at this close up. It becomes more evident what we're looking at. It appears to be a missile sitting on top of a launch vehicle. We can measure the dimension, three meters by 12 meters, and infer its type, like a probable Shahab 2. Understanding the dimension of the vehicle and the entrance of the tunnel, we can assess that these vehicles can be stored underground. Let's explore another area. The characteristics of this 15-meter missile are consistent with the Shahab 3. Seeing multiple missiles expo exposed to the environment is an anomaly. Let's try to understand why. Zooming out a little and looking at this area, we can see that there used to be a building here. But two months later, it looks like there's been a possible explosion and the building has been severely damaged. Looking at this roll view two false color image, the black area is also indicative of a brush fire. Up to this point, we've been able to identify a suspected underground facility, discern probable missiles, and determine a likely reason why they're out in the open. Let's begin capturing this information. We'll use a 3D scene to take us to the top of a ridge. Also, adding a window in image space and an ortho map in 2D. We can digitize the fence in map space Next, add a building in image space. And finally, add an anti-aircraft artillery gun in 3D. What you just saw was digitizing in multiple windows, capturing features where they're easiest to identify. Let's take a look at all the features that we captured about this facility. Looking at the outer fence, you'll notice that the fence line does not go around the entire facility. How do we explain this? Let's go back to 3D. Doing a slope calculation, the outer fences appear to only be placed on low sloped areas, and the high sloped areas are providing natural protection. To confirm this hypothesis, using our built-in hydrology tools, we calculate the watershed, and can clearly see that the outer fences are in place to complement the natural physical security. Since we found three anti-aircraft artillery gun positions, let's use our new exploratory, an exploratory analysis tool to better understand their coverage. Using the view shed, we compute the visibility in real time from these locations. The results are interactive. The tools also recognize all 3D features in the scene. The image and geospatial analysis capabilities in ArcGIS Pro help us understand that this is a very secure underground facility that supports missile operations and should be closely monitored. Thank you.
Now let's switch from satellite imagery to drones. We flew a drone over a second facility and captured both videos and imagery. We used a high-end camera on this drone. So let's take a look at how we can use this content in ArcGIS. Using one of our apps for the field, drone to map it allows us to create both 2D and 3D products from that imagery that's captured. These orange lines represent the flight paths, and the blue points are the loca GPS locations of where images were collected. And for each of these images, we have access and can view those individual images. Now, using these individual images, drone to map has several processing options. So for instance, we could do a rapid process to confirm what we expected to capture while we're still out in the field. Additional options exist for creating different 2D and 3D options. Now in less than 40 minutes, we had our first 2D products. Look at this rich detail of this ortho mosaic. It was captured at two centimeter pixel resolution. As well as the high accuracy of the digital surface model and a digital terrain model. Now, once you've created these 2D and 3D products, you can easily share these as services to your organization and also to ArcGIS Pro. Switching to a 3D web scene in ArcGIS Pro, let's continue our image exploitation and analysis. Now, this beautiful imagery actually looks a bit blurry, but there's a reason for that. You should have received a pair of anaglyph glasses. So let's get them out. Hopefully you didn't lose them at lunch and put them on. ArcGIS Pro now supports stereoscopic mode. So as we pan and zoom around this image or this 3D scene, you should see better clarity and depth. using your glasses. And one of the products that's created from drone to map is a point cloud, like this one. It contains over 18 million images, or points. And each point has its x, y, and elevation value. drone to map also creates 3D meshes. These give us a seamless, realistic view. And I can even read the writing on the wall. AWT control building. Now, whether you're using a point cloud or a 3D mesh, you have the ability to measure distances and features. For instance, from the ground to the bottom of this vent is approximately two meters. Next, we wanted to create a collection of stereo pair images to view in 3D. A stereo pair is two offset images that when they're combined in the brain, it gives you 3D depth. Now this stereo pair, as I zoom in, the building pops out and I can see the tanks and we see the pipes on the top of the building and this truck being filled. Now as you move around your stereo pair and you get to the edge, you can simply hit the M key and it'll switch to the best, next best stereo pair. In this pair, we see a big pile of dirt. I wonder what's going on there. It's okay to remove your glasses now. I just want to point out that we not only support those anaglyph glasses, we also support active shutter glasses as well. So let's switch to a 2D map and check out what's going on in this area around that pile of dirt. It looks like they're doing some excavation. Looking at the digital surface model, we can clearly see that dugout area. Let's compute the volume. Passing in the terrain into this geoprocessing model that computes volume, we can see that the results of this area, the volume is 9,085 cubic meters. Now that was just a quick glimpse of some of the capabilities that you have access to using that detailed drone imagery to do image exploitation in ArcGIS. We also want to give you a sneak peek of what's coming in Pro this summer with full motion video. The videos captured from the drone become just another image type that you can add to either your 2D 
or 3D scene. Once they're added, we can begin to work with these videos. As I play them back, we see the footprint of the video that was captured. And we also see the location that the drone was when the video was being captured. Now, bookmarks are used in your map to get to a person, navigate to a location. We can also use that to navigate in a video. For instance, I can pause this video when I see something of interest, zoom in on the video. And as I play this back, we'll see the water moving in these aeration tanks. Now, if you see something of interest and you want to edit, all you do is click on the video or click on the map, and you can capture your observations. To close our story, you've probably figured out this is not a, a facility in Iran at all. It's actually a water recycling plant in Southern California's Yucaipa Valley Water District. And in a short amount of time, we were able to combine image and geospatial analysis into one application to investigate facilities in both Iran and California and gain complete understanding. Thank you.